Hi, I'm Stephen Greer. We're here at the FDA to talk with the director of CDER at the uh, FDA, the uh, drug division, uh, Dr. Janet Woodcock. And uh, hi, Dr. Woodcock, thank you. Uh, Dr. Woodcock, if you could begin by w describing what is your center and what is your uh, uh, responsibilities within that center? Well, the Center for Drugs has about 3,100 people in it, and mostly they're scientists, physicians, pharmacists, nurses, other healthcare professionals. And we're in charge of regulating all the medicines that are out there. If you take an over-the-counter medicine, if you take a prescription drug, take a generic, FDA, Center for Drugs, has made sure that that's safe, it's effective, and it's high quality, and that it's available. And we regard that as our mission, to make sure safe, effective, high quality drugs are available to people who need them. Uh, there are some exceptions. Are oncology drugs not under your division, or has that been changed? Oncology drugs are, as well as the therapeutic biologic drugs, like is, monoclonal antibodies and so forth. Is that new? Has it always been that way? Changed about six years ago, okay. perhaps. Oh, interesting. All right. Um, so uh, the first question is um, safety uh, has... Uh, been uh, increased, I believe, in priority, it'd be fair to say, since the 2007 FDAA or FDA and, and the new regime of the FDA. And, and there are many drugs that have risk benefits. They, they deserve it. They should be approved. But yet you know there's going to be side effects like Tisabri or what have you. So, uh, and these have been in the news recently with you. For example, Avandia, you, there was a, a big uh, saga there and you approved, uh, said it should stay on the market with a lot of monitoring. So when you have a drug that you know is going to have safety issues, how, are, how is your division handling that now? Uh, well, we, if, if specifically, if you could discuss our REMS, what those are. Sure. FDA got new authorities under the Amendments Act of uh, 2007, and among those were safety authorities. So for the first time, FDA can require restrictions on a drug under the law uh, before the drug is approved, and these are called REMS. Uh, we can also order a clinical study to be done if we find after marketing that there's a safety problem. And we can also order the label to be changed. And previously, we weren't able to do any of those things. We um, would have to threaten to take the drug off the market in order for them to happen. So um, now, if there's a drug either on the market or that we're proposing would be put on the market that has an outstanding safety problem that might mean that its risks would outweigh the benefits. And if there's some risk management strategy that could manage that in a way or inform people to make sure they knew they were aware of the risk, then we may put that into place, and that's called a REMS, to make sure that the benefits continue to outweigh the risk of the drug. And uh, are there new specific tools such as national registries or are you following safety in a new way within the last few years that you weren't previously following? How, are there new ways to monitor drugs? Well, FDA has long um, relied upon what we call spontaneous reports. Mm -hmm. And healthcare professionals report to the companies or to the FDA about problems that occur. But now with the new electronic health records, with uh, many other things that are available, we do have new tools. Uh, the Amendments Act uh, told us to set up the Sentinel system, which we have done, which is a sort of distributed network of electro where there are electronic health records, either claims or actual medical records. And we're setting it up to use that to monitor drugs after marketing. We also, yeah, are looking at new consolidated registries and other ways to follow people long term as they are exposed to various treatments. And this relates...